today's read aloud about the human body is called the digestive system. Today you will learn about the organs that play a role in the digestive system. Do you know one of the main organs of the digestive system? That's right, the stomach. You will learn more about several more organs in addition to the stomach. Most of the digestive system's organs are located in the abdomen, sometimes called the belly. Abdominal organs, the primary digestive organs, are found in this area. The process of breaking down or digesting food is a slow one. Muscular gates hold food back as well as open to release digested food along the way. Listen carefully to learn where these gates called sphincters are. Let's take a look at some vocabulary words in our read aloud today. The first word is esophagus, a muscular tube that connects the throat to the stomach. The next word is filtering, passing through a device to remove unwanted material. And the last word is villi, the small finger-like threads inside the small intestine through which nutrients from food are absorbed into the body. Let's begin. Ah, boys and girls, when I look at you, I can't tell whether you are hungry or whether you have just had a meal. But one thing I do know is that everybody in this room has a digestive system and that all of your digestive systems are working right now. There is a lot going on inside those bodies of yours. You each eat several hundred pounds of food in one year. It takes roughly 20 hours for food to travel through your gut or digestive tract, a long complicated series of tunnels with openings at both ends. Where does the journey begin? Yes, the process of digestion begins when you put a piece of food in your mouth. When you were born, most of your teeth were hiding under your gums. That's why babies start out with a liquid diet. But once your first set of teeth came in, you were able to eat solid foods. You are at an age right now when you are probably losing some of those teeth and getting a new set. If so, maybe you are finding it hard to chew certain foods. Your teeth help you break down your food into millions of tiny pieces. The longer you chew, the smaller the pieces become and the easier it is to digest. Human teeth come in different shapes and sizes designed to eat both plants and animals. Let's take a look at the different types of teeth you have in your mouth. The flat wedge shaped teeth at the front of your mouth are called incisors. The incisors, both top and bottom, work together like a pair of scissors to bite, slice, and cut up your food. Next to the incisors are sharp fang-like teeth called canines, or dog's teeth. These teeth tear and rip food apart the way that dogs do with a piece of meat. Behind the canines, bicuspids help to crush the food. In the back of the mouth, wide teeth with bumpy tops known as molars, help grind the food into mush. Next time you bite into a piece of chicken, sample a piece of cheese or chop into an apple. See if you can tell which teeth help you the most. Have you ever heard someone call food mouth-watering? What do you think that means? When you smell your favorite food, perhaps spaghetti and meatballs, your mouth probably starts to water as you think about how good it will taste. That watery substance, or spit, is called saliva. Saliva comes from small salivary glands in your cheek and under your tongue. It helps keep your mouth damp and softens food as you chew. 
beginning to break down food for easy digestion. Saliva serves another important job as well, helping to wash away and kill bacteria. Did you know that every day you produce as many as six cups of saliva in your mouth? Can you feel it? Can you taste it? What else do you have in your mouth besides your teeth and saliva? What's the name of that fleshy muscle in your mouth that is covered in taste buds? Your tongue, of course. Not only does your tongue help you taste your food, it also helps push the food around your mouth, rolling it into a mashed up wet lump of food. Your tongue pushes the lump of food to the back of your mouth and helps you swallow. Once food is swallowed, it passes into a food canal called the esophagus. This stretchy tube is only about 10 inches long, leading from the back of your throat, through your neck and chest, to your stomach. Food passes through the esophagus quickly. Muscles squeeze together and push the food into the stomach in about 10 seconds or less. It's a lot like squeezing toothpaste from its tube. Put your hands on the left side of your upper abdomen, just below your chest and above your waist. That's where your stomach lives, behind your lower ribs. This human mixing machine is shaped a bit like the letter J. Your stomach acts like a balloon, expanding to hold the food it receives. The stomach's gastric juices help break down the food into a paste-like substance. These digestive juices also kill any germs that may have been swallowed. Round and round food churns for three to four hours as muscles squeeze inside the stomach walls. Once it is the substance of a thick soup, the food continues its journey into the intestines. There are two types of intestines, the small intestine and the large intestine. The intestines are tubes located in the lower abdomen through which food and food waste travel. Even though there are two different kinds of intestines, the small and the large intestines, they are actually part of the same long single tube. A muscular gate or sphincter at the bottom of the stomach opens to allow food to flow from the stomach into the small intestine. The small intestine is about 21 feet long, or about as long as five seven-year-olds lying head to toe. Even though it's longer than the large intestine, it's called the small intestine because it's much thinner than the large intestine. This narrow tube, the small intestine, is coiled up like a snake below your belly button. Muscles squeeze together and push the mashed up soupy liquid into the curly small intestine. The food is mixed once more with digestive juices from the liver, pancreas, and gallbladder, all organs that are part of your digestive system. The juices, called enzymes, break the food down and make it more and more watery along the way. The small intestine with its millions of villi or finger-like threads is where some of the most important work of the digestive system takes place. The villi reach out and absorb or soak up usable nutrients in water, passing them through the bloodstream into all the cells of your body. Did you ever hear rumbling sounds coming from inside you? Chances are they are coming from your small intestine as muscles contract or squeeze together to break down food. They are the sounds of a healthy gut. Most of the nutrients that are absorbed by the small intestines many villi travel to the reddish purplish liver, one of your body's important cleansing organs. Your lower ribs on the right side of your body protect your liver. Its function is to clean the blood filtering or straining out any leftover waste. It turns this waste into bile, 
one of the juices used by the small intestine to help digest your food. The clean blood with lots of nutrients is carried to muscles to make them stronger, to bones to make them harder, and to every other part of your body to give you energy to help you grow. Since blood goes to every part of your body, the liver performs a very important function of making sure the blood circulating in your body is clean. This finger-shaped organ is called the appendix. As far as anyone knows, it doesn't seem to be useful to the digestive system. From time to time, the appendix can become infected or sick and cause a disease called appendicitis. When people get appendicitis, they get a very sharp pain in the lower abdomen in the area surrounding the intestines. The pain comes from the appendix, located in the lower right side of your abdomen, near your hip bone. When it causes too much pain, doctors remove it. For many years, the appendix was considered a completely useless organ. Only recently have some doctors begun to think that the appendix may serve to fight infections. The appendix is located right where the small intestine widens out into the large intestine. The large intestine is where the solid waste ends up. Even though the large intestine is much, much shorter than the small intestine, it is called the large intestine because it is much wider. Parts of food not digested in the small intestine are squeezed out into the large intestine where they remain for up to two days. Water is absorbed from the waste into the walls of the large intestine and passed into the bloodstream. The waste becomes thicker and thicker, piling up into a solid mass known as feces. Feces are stored in the rectum the final section of the large intestine until another muscular gate or sphincter opens and allows the feces to pass through the anus, the body's exit point for solid waste. That is the end of your food's journey. From mouth to esophagus to stomach to small intestine to large intestine to anus. The digestive system's organs are working all the time, day and night, to process food into substances that your body can use, providing you with the nutrients and energy you need. Here are some discussion questions. Feel free to pause the video in order to allow time to think and discuss. The human body has many muscular gates called sphincters. One is between the esophagus and the stomach. What other sphincters did you hear about today? What is the name of the long stretchy tube that carries food from your throat to your stomach? learned that both saliva and gastric juices work to kill germs. Why is that necessary? How do germs get into your body? If the intestines are one long coiled tube, why do you think we talk about them separately, using the terms small intestine and large intestine? You learned that the liver filters waste from your blood. Why is it important to have clean blood? If you have appendicitis, the doctor may operate on you to remove one of your organs. What is the name of that organ? Is it dangerous to remove the appendix? After this read aloud, you know what digestion means. If we put the prefix in before a word, it changes the meaning of the word to not or without. If we put in before the word digestion, we get the word indigestion. What do you think that means? 
What are some possible causes of indigestion?